All right. So, um, first of all, I know a lot of you have, or a few of you have said that you don't really like the videos where I'm on camera like this and kind of spinning around my kitchen and all that. But, um, I think I just do a better job, honestly, of these kind of like rant videos, um, like this. So I apologize if the quality isn't quite, uh, up there where it usually is in terms of graphics and all the cool stuff you like guys like to see uh i just got stuff i gotta get off my mind this morning because once again i'm getting very irritated uh especially at a certain fan base and i also know i know i know some of you guys don't like it when i make these videos because it's about your fan base in particular or like a certain group of people just know that it's not specifically about you i think that uh most people that follow my channel very closely that do happen to be Buckeye fans or rival fans of uh, Michigan, quote-unquote, that team up north. Uh, Y'all are reasonable, rational, logical people. I don't think you'd be here if you weren't. Uh, that being said, there is a segment of your fan base that is just showing their whole ass right now, and I gotta be honest. Um, and it's not just uh, Ohio State... Um, Michigan State, uh, other college football fans out there. There's even some Michigan fans that are kind of e extorting this logic and stuff. And I also feel like I need to uh, qualify this video with, I really try not to get political or make social commentary on this channel, but I'm also a humanities major with a minor in sociology. So is this gonna come out sometimes? Just know that it's just my opinion um, and I'm not making any judgment statements on institutions like the police and things like that. I'm just providing these as like anecdotes and anecdotes um, as examples, anecdotes, by the way, as examples for uh, from my experience and my education, why I think this whole situation with Jim Harbaugh wanting the immunity clause is, um, well, it's ridiculous the way that some of you guys see it. So let's break it down is jim harbaugh admitting guilt in wanting an immunity clause clause by the way um uncle lou it's a clause not a cause i know that's just a slight little error but you've got sixty thousand subscribers do better anyway um jim harbaugh wanting an immunity clause in his contract is it an admission of guilt is it him saying now that he wants protection from certain punishments with things that had to do with his program, does that mean that he is thereby implying that his program did something wrong? And I'm going to tell you something that a lot of you probably won't agree with, but then I'm going to give my reasoning and my logic as to why I think this is right. And no, no, absolutely not. No, do I, I don't think it's an admission of guilt. It's not. Let me go back and give you guys those anecdotes that I uh, wanted to mention that I wanted to talk about. And by the way, uh, like the video, help get it up into the algorithm, uh, help get us, help this channel grow. Yeah, you've heard all the stuff from all the different um, uh, social media uh, comment uh, 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 content creators out there already. When I was 18 years old, 20 years old, I did... A lot of stupid things. Um, I you you probably see, noticed the tattoos and and the band T-shirts and stuff. I'm a former punk kid. I, I used to get into a lot of dumb shit. Had a big spiky mohawk when I was a teenager and just did a lot of dumb shit. Um, but there were cases in my teens when I had run-ins with the law or I had run-ins with certain institutions that govern things. And we're gonna apply this to the NCAA as well in a minute, where things just weren't quite right. And um, looking back on it, I realized that sometimes people in institutions and things don't make the right judgment calls, which is why I think Jim Harbaugh is asking for this immunity clause, Uncle Lou, in his contract. Um, so when I was 18, I had a stick shift uh, diesel pickup truck. Love that truck to death. Wish I still had that truck to this day. If anyone out there knows anything about diesel pickup trucks, it had the 12-valve Cummins in it, which is like the holy grail of uh, diesel pickup trucks. The person I was with at the time, I was teaching them to drive stick. We were out on some country roads. Uh, lo and behold, she uh, stalls it out at a stop sign. Happens all the time. When you're learning to drive stick, I kind of try to coach her through it, yada, yada, yada. 
And then lo and behold, there's a sheriff's deputy behind us and sees this as an opportunity to uh, pull over a couple teenagers driving in the country for no reason other than the fact that we stalled out at a stop sign, gave him an excuse, pulls us over, uh, decides for pretty much no reason other than we were a couple of teenagers and I guess I looked like somebody who would smoke a lot of pot and stuff like that, uh, to search my vehicle. And two hours later, my truck is torn apart, everything is thrown out on the ground, drug dogs come and sniff it, and I lose two hours of my time just because somebody thought that I looked like a guy who might smoke a little weed or have some drugs on him. Um, I've also been, uh, gotten tickets and things for reckless driving merely because I pull off from a stoplight when it's been raining and the pavement's wet and my tires spin a little bit. That was an interesting, uh, interaction I had with getting a ticket for literally, like I said, my tires were pretty bald on my pickup truck and I pulled off from a red light. The pavement was wet and my tires spun a little bit. Why am I bringing up these anecdotes? Well, when... It's an example of how sometimes when you have governing institutions overseeing things, they make judgment calls that don't necessarily line up with the reality of what the situation is. And in some situations, like the cops in the uh, situations that I just provided, they're more or less judge, jury, and executioner. If they decide they want to search your vehicle, they decide they want to write you a ticket, whether you think uh, you're in the wrong or not, whether you're actually in the wrong or not, you're getting your fucking car searched. You're getting a fucking ticket. And the NCAA is no different. And in fact, the NCAA is even worse. They are a governing body that is judge, jury, and executioner. There's no oversight committee that I know of. There's no, like, governmental uh, body. There's no, like, uh, committee uh, in the Senate or the House that oversees their actions. They just make judgment decisions like they just did with Florida State. Uh, Florida State had a uh, assistant coach that gave a kid a ride um, during the dead period or something. Something went down with Florida State and uh, that was seen as an inducement. By the way, meanwhile, kids are literally sharing money in their graphics uh, when they commit to Miami and they're pulling up to signings with Ole Miss. Uh, in Lamborghinis, and the whole Jeremiah Smith thing was basically just a bidding war, but <laughs> you know, just not worry about that. No, <laughs> who cares about all that? Which brings me back to the whole sign gate thing with Connor Stallions and the situation with Jim Harbaugh. For all that we've known, from all the evidence that we have gotten, uh, Jim Harbaugh had no idea what was going down. You can agree with it, you can disagree with it, you can think that, oh, he had to have known, you can say that there was a lack of institutional control. And I agree with all that. I do think Jim Harbaugh deserves to get punished in some sort of way. As a Michigan fan, I think it's utterly shameful that we have Connor Stallions dancing around on stage with Dan Dave Portnoy doing little bits and his little Twitter thing to get attention. Uh, pardon my French, but fuck Connor Stallions now until the end of time. You're an idiot. Go back to fixing vacuums and get the fuck out of my life. Cause you nearly ruined my program over, uh, you know, sending some people to videotape some shit that you could have gotten off of all 22 film, which is what most teams do anyway. You're the biggest idiot of all time. Go fuck yourself. With that being said, I feel like Jim Harbaugh may feel like, just in the same case of me that I just provided an anecdote from my personal life, this may be a situation where the NCAA ends up coming down harder on him than he feels like is rightfully deserved. And it's hard to think, if you're Jim Harbaugh, that they would do anything other than that. There's been an ongoing back and forth between Jim and the NCAA regarding uh, players getting paid. Uh, not to get too much into conflict theory here, anything deeply sociological or political, but Jim wants more revenue share with all the players. He wants the quote-unquote means of football production shared with some of the players. Uh, and, of course, the NCAA doesn't want that. So you have to factor that in. I don't think it's as big of a deal as some people are making it out to be. Again, Michigan fans, this isn't probably isn't going to be a video that you entirely enjoy either. Sometimes I think... I have to be the one to tell you what you need to hear and not just what you want to hear. Michigan does deserve punishment. But the thing is, again, the punishment that Jim Harbaugh may be afraid of coming down is 
bigger than what is deserved here. I think there ultimately is a big difference between lack of institutional control, which is a violation, which is something that deserves some level of punishment, and just assuming that Jim Harbaugh was the head honcho in all this, that he was the one running the whole ring. Remember back when Pete Famel was sharing out tweets every freaking day about this uh, at like 7 p.m., conveniently dropping them at dinner time because click, 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 click. That's when most of us are online. Um, <clears throat> And we all thought that it was probably going to lead to something more. Well, it hasn't. But the NCAA may still rule as if it is something more. They may hand down a punishment that's very heavy-handed. And Jim Harbaugh is afraid of that, and rightfully so. And again, that isn't an admission of guilt. It's just saying, hey, I got pulled over. Uh, I uh, My tires were spinning on wet pavement. Was it a little dangerous? Could I have maybe done something better to avoid it? Yeah, probably. But also, this kind of thing happens all the time. I didn't have the greatest control of my vehicle at that moment when I got pulled over by a cop and got a ticket for it anyway. Uh, but there are situations, there were circumstances that I was in in which I couldn't really control it either. You, It's very, very hard to know exactly what everybody inside of your program is doing. By the way, uh, Georgia, what's going on with all the drunk driving? Weird. Uh, you'd think we'd see like more about that, but <clears throat> we're so focused on sign stealing in our society seems to care more about the fairness of football games than uh you know <laughs> people dying in drunk drunken car accidents and you know speaking of certain fans from a certain state uh guys who have multiple counts of uh what is a sexual assault on their record playing starting quarterback for their favorite football team their favorite pro football team but who gives a shit about all that somebody may have done something unfair on the football field like I said, this was going to be a really salty one. I hope you guys don't mind. From time to time, I'm going to do these because, I, again, I think sometimes you, you got to hear what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. But anyway, this has gotten really rambly. I think I made my point. He's just afraid of a more heavy-handed punishment coming down is what I think. I don't think it's an admission of guilt. I don't think it's like, oh, man, I definitely need this in my contract um, because I definitely did something wrong and I don't want to be punished for it. I also don't see it in the guy's character of being something like that. Jim and I, from what I've gathered, he doesn't share a lot of his political beliefs or social beliefs or anything like that publicly. But from what I gathered, he and I don't really see eye to eye on everything, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, he does seem like a pretty moral guy. He seems like a, he's a guy of high moral character. And you see it reflected in the way all of his players and coaches talk about him. I think at the end of the day, there was somebody on staff who did something wrong, broke the rules. Michigan deserves to be punished for that. But there is also, because this has become such a big story in the news, because there is literally a mob out there of, um, the, you know, a torch-wielding mob coming for Jim Harbaugh's head. By the way, if I have to see another Buckeye Huddle video pop up in my feed of Tom Moore going, oh, gee, Tony, Tony, I wonder if this is finally... This is, is this going to be the end of Jim Harmoth for three hours? I'm just, just going to lose my mind. Um, anyway, they're, he's just worried about a more heavy-handed punishment coming down than he thinks he actually deserves. And as Americans, shouldn't we kind of identify with that to some degree? I'm sure a lot of us have had run-ins, again, like my situation uh, with the police, with law enforcement officers, with the principal at your school with the pastor at your church with people in positions of authority that maybe come down with a more heavy handed punishment or write you a ticket when you don't feel it's uh, necessary and things like that. It happens all the time. Again, it's not an admission of guilt and stop oversimplifying these things. These are extremely reductionist points of view, not to get too intellectual about it all, but to boil it down to, Oh, he did X, which means Y extremely reductionist in a very nuanced uh, and complicated situation, which is ongoing with the Michigan football team. This video is now almost 14 fucking minutes long. Uh, I don't know if I'm even going to upload this or not. Yeah, I'll upload it. I'll still upload it. Uh, again, very rambly, but I think you guys get my point. And like, share, and subscribe, or let me know in the comments how much of an idiot I am, like I'm sure a lot of you will do anyway. I'm sure I'll definitely read it. Love you guys. Bye.